take a look at this! Hey, man! That suit is you! You'll get some leg tonight for sure! Tell us how you do! Come on, Muse, give me a break. Hey, 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 one break coming up! It's the Going Off Podcast with the Rap Critic and Muse. So we're a little late to this particular party, but we gotta, 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 gotta talk about the 2020 MTV Video Music Awards. <laughs> We were like the Simpsons, man. We may be late, but... <laughs> we can't all be like fucking South Park, all right? <laughs> ah, fucking right, cutting right. edge. See, that's what you gotta understand, yeah. MTV was nice enough to compile every single performance in a one-hour video, and I watched that right before we got started. And when I saw that video, I was like, wait, did they actually... Is this what I think it is? Like, where they actually just put it all together? It's like, oh, thank you for finally, like, recognizing that people, like, are on the internet mainly. And that, like, yes, just make it easy so that I can just see them all. Like, thank you. If only BET can get on the same page, I think we'd be golden. I haven't visited that website since the... What was that cyber that we did? Oh, my God. It's so bad. (laughs) It's like, what are you doing? (laughs) I've never seen a worse laid out website of like a pro- a professional company, a media company, right. no less. So, okay, let's start with the performances, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, I start off with uh, Jack Harlow's uh, song. You know, like, it, it's a cool little, like, hey, guys, it, it, you know, introduction to who I am. And, and he has a cool little, like, fun flow where he's just, like, chill, bouncing around the track. You know, it's it's this, it's this you know, SoundCloud slash, like, lo-fi generation of, like, you know, confident rapper. Where, but he's still kind of like, oh, but maybe I'll still talk about my insecurities. But, like, you know, I'm still cool as shit, though. <laughs> you know, like. Can I tell you something maybe embarrassing? I've heard this song on the radio hundreds of times i've managed to avoid this this whole time so this all these lyrics were hitting me for the first time it it gets a fair amount of radio play around here i had no idea it was him so when we did the uh the freestyles i didn't even put it together that that was the same guy when I said Chica was the only person I was familiar with, like, their work, I guess that was kind of a lie. I guess I kind of lied. Look what you've done. <laughs> I thought it was weird how, like, he's wearing a jazz jersey. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't appear to be the jazz playing? Or maybe it is, but they're not wearing jerseys, only he is? Uh, a couple of people were wearing jerseys. I think the baby was wearing a Lakers jersey, even though he's from North Carolina. I was like, "What? I fucking you, you, you can't even wear a goddamn Hornets jersey, the baby. <laughs> Come on, man. He wasn't even wearing a jersey. He was wearing a fucking track jacket. He was fucking decked out. Yeah. No excuse. You couldn't fucking go to the starter store. <laughs> As North Kakalakians, we are appalled. Look, I to I. I <clears throat> Stop the show! <laughs> Stop the track! Cut. When I was a kid, um, I used to really like sports jackets, even though I didn't watch any of the sports. Oh, I feel the same. They look cool. <laughs> they look really cool. They normally had a fun design on them, and they were colorful. So when I was living in Jersey, I had a fucking Hornets jacket. The baby has no excuse. <laughs> I don't know where you're coming from, to baby, but you know what? You're fucking making things happen. You're living your best life. I can't hate on you too much. Uh, but yeah, very unassuming performance from Jack Harlow. It was okay. For me, being that I hadn't heard this song before, I happened to avoid it. Like, uh, I appreciated it. You know, it's like, oh, okay. It is, the, you know, you know, new Mac Miller, you know. <laughs> we need the cool white guy. <laughs> it's definitely not the worst track on the radio, so I didn't mind hearing it. Here. Exactly, exactly. That And that's, that's all I need. I just need effort you know (laughs) um next miley's midnight sky song this one actually like i was listening to it just to be like i mean you know all right it's a name there might be something to talk about and then i'm listening to it i'm like yo this is actually like 
getting me right now. Like I could really I, after this shit is over, I could imagine if this comes on, like I'm not stopping my uh, my hmm. step. I'm not. Yeah. Um. I. However, I was listening to it and I heard a little a little bit of Fleetwood Mac energy. She was putting it hey. there. You, know? <laughs> you fucking heard that too. No, I don't mind the little Wiccan, you know, uh, things you put in there. I actually like when she sings in her lower register. I, I like legitimately really like that. Um, and I've noticed that throughout the years. And and so I felt like on this track was the first time she was really, really bottoming me out in like using those lower tones. And like there were points where she was like singing like like these higher tones, but she was doing it in this sort of like deeper smoky voice. And she has these higher notes and she like growls them like a cougar or some shit. It was so cool. And then there was a part where she was on the disco ball and I was like, I mean, okay. <laughs> but you know, update, whatever. It's 2020. We're trying to look shiny. I get it. She was definitely on some uh, Stevie Nicks shit there. Um, there was even a O oh at that one part where like... I think that was the thing that got me. Was yeah. that it sounded very Edge of 17. <laughs> it sounded like it was str- like a fucking sample straight from it. I wasn't really digging that song, honestly. I can understand. It's a weird mix, these performances. They're taking advantage of the fact that it's not in person, that a lot of them, well, all of them, I guess, are either pre-recorded or uh, simulcast. Some are actual performances. Others seem to be... uh, lip sync to tracks and we'll get to one of those here in a second and i'm like fuck it like yeah just make new music videos like get the, f- why the fuck not like, what else is everybody doing i i definitely appreciate the performance when people do sing live like i think miley was but like you could see mgk like that was straight <laughs> up he was not oh. in his cues <laughs> yeah i put in a little yeah here's a little mini trash zone here uh fucking uh hey guys did you want to blink 182 but with auto dude o- okay no well moving on uh. <laughs> i fucking saw todd in the shadows say is mgk gonna be the one to save rock if Rock is in this state of decay, it is not worth saving. <laughs> Let it fucking if go, all we dude. Can do is sounding like Blink One Eighty Two. Maybe wrap it up. I was here for Travis on drums because your boys still got it. Absolutely, fucking literally, no debate. But goddamn MGK, and you even mentioned it on Twitter. And yeah, I, I didn't even watch that performance until today with this fucking in my head. My like, head. <laughs> like you thought he was, was going to catch that shit. <laughs> I liked the set pieces and where they were filming, and I liked the look of it. Exactly. I thought it was really cool and nice neon bright. Like, this is really cool looking, but you're doing this obviously to make up for something, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I can see someone buying that this winter, but. <laughs> Um, but what I was gonna say is like, in fact, didn't Blink One Eighty Two have a song like a couple of years ago? Like, uh, I'm in love with this girl, but she's out of my And you know what? I- I'll take that. So, matter of fact, MGK, you don't even knew- need to do that job because when uh, Blink One Eighty Two comes out with some new shit, I'm actually still bobbing with it. Y- you can keep the auto tune, bro. MGK, your services are no longer required. <laughs> Precisely. And and then <laughs> Black Eyed Peas with the glow dicks. Oh. <laughs> Oh my what god, fucking! Oh my god! What are you doing? It's like you had to know that was bad. You had to know that looked bad. The song wasn't great. Their energy was like, hey, look, look at these glowing crotches. Isn't that great? <laughs> That's literally all we have. So. You want to keep looking at those? You're going to keep zooming in on them? Right. Yep, they're still there, still flashing. I want to know, A, how heavy the devices are, and B, (laughs) how fucking hot it is right up against your fucking junk. Oh, no. It's got to be burning your sack. Well, at least we know they won't have kids. I did really like the baby's performance. Right? That was so fun. Like, you know, him hanging out with the Jabberwockies. I love that. I love that he pulls out the Jabberwockies because they're fucking awesome. <laughs> I was worried that we were going to get a rehash of the, um, was it BET? Cop had like the knee on his back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, what are you going to do? How are you going to top it? These performances, they made some really excellent use of the green screens and just how like 
it was just like a night sky, whatever, and mm. then just everything got set on fire. Ooh. Yeah, and you see the, the, the little uh, flamelets that look like close and far away and stuff like that. I, I love that. Look, I hope when we get back to normal stage performances that this is something that stays. Right, I, I like, straight up... Would they I, realize I, how dope this looks and right? keep it? I, I was straight up like... Oh my god, this may be the best fucking VMAs we've ever had. <laughs> like, this they might really be pulled out all the one. stops. I don't think we're gonna really have much to say about Lewis, but I wasn't really here for him yeah, or that no, song. No. <laughs> I, I know this is gonna sound whatever, but I have no room in my life for more of this Ed Sharon boring ass right, white edgeless. bread shit. <laughs> I have no energy, no patience <laughs> for this boring ass, bland ass, pasty ass, straight white dude singing his heart out about who the fuck cares? <laughs> I enjoy uh, the baby's performance. I like the, the part where they drop the masks. I like how the Jabberwocky came to the rescue. Again, like, they had, like, a different energy for this one. You know, they made it a little bit more fun. Where it's like, yeah. you know, they got him in the back of the police car, and it looks really cool as, you're, like, you're seeing the, like, thing, and you're trying to figure out, like, wait, is this actually the performance, or is this part of the, like, the CGI or whatever thing? That looked weird. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, honestly, I kind of like the that reboot looking at aesthetic sometimes <laughs> I think it's just interesting to me and then the Jabberwocky like runs up next to his vehicle <laughs> and it's just like hey dude and then somehow dips into the car yeah it, like phases through the door like hey what's up <laughs> and gets him out uh, gets him out of the car he's, but doesn't get him out of the car yet just <laughs> they're just they're just vibing no he just second. hangs out with him for a while yeah he's like wait the song off the, the, the police car is playing is actually pretty dope hold on <laughs> I'm just gonna help you get your handcuffs off, and then you have to awkwardly dangle them for like another half minute until the song's <laughs> over. Let's let's hope they don't check the rear view mirror. <laughs> Yeah, I hope they don't <laughs> look back here for any reason. I don't know if we were gonna talk about the weekend. Like I enjoy his voice, like specifically because of the that like flute like timbre he has, w which really like carries in a very strong way, and I'm like. Whoa, that's, like, actually, like, keeping my attention. And, you know, they, they did try to, you know, I, I noted this one specifically because, like, of how they, they tried to vary, you know, the, what the camera's doing and stuff like that. And with this one, it's, like, it's following him down the corridors, you know. I really liked the camera up in his face. I liked that a lot. And then when you see it, like, zoom out, and you're like, oh, he's on top of a building, and, like, oh, what's going on around here? And, you know, it gets a little bland at that point. But, you know, they had the fireworks and stuff, so. He's not, like, being pursued by anyone. He's not, like, escaping people that were beating him up. He's just like, nah, I'm just on the roof now. Just chilling, I guess. There were a couple of performances that felt like they ended abruptly. I kind of felt the Lady Gaga one did. That was a fucking montage, too. I really like the medleys, where it's like, yeah, here, here's like a few tracks to sink your teeth into. Yeah. And unlike Black Eyed Peas, Lady Gaga didn't have to pull out a song from like 10 years ago. <laughs> Just, <laughs> here's <laughs> three fucking songs <laughs> all off the new record. How about that? <laughs> oh, oh, we'll get to that in a second. Right before we got to mention, my boys, the penultimate, BTS. Yo, once again. <laughs> Dude. I'm loving it. These guys are so goddamn incredible. Fucking stars, all of them, man. All of them, where it's just like, like your eye doesn't know who to go to because they're like, oh shit, he looks so cool. What the fuck is he doing? You know what I mean? Like, it's that type of thing where you're like, yo, I'm so like, it, like it flashed me back to like those 90s music videos again. I'm like, yes, I just want to watch. The, do you have like a whole album of just this? I'll just watch this all day. Like, this is cool. <laughs> People, you know, putting in like, you know what I'm saying? These motherfuckers dressed to the goddamn nine. Each one of them looks like they're out of a different TLC music video. I fucking love it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, you know, they're covered in with these fucking moves and shit. And the singing. Whoo! That shit was fucking crisp. There was one dude uh, with, like, cream-colored hair and, like, a cream-colored, like, suit with the earrings. And he just, like, had that sort of, like, fucking, you know, like, like, a la carte looking energy, you know? Like, like he might, oh, yeah. like, might be a vampire. Because I, I was really noticed <laughs> at the end, you know, when they do the boom, like, pose thing, he had that one, like, little extra thing where it's like, ladies, you know? I was like, oh, shit, okay. Like, but, like, 
like everyone was kind of like everyone was like competing for the attention and that and that guy like happened to be like wait a minute because i didn't know who was like the lead singer you know what i mean so i'm like Whoa. like oh shit like yo all these motherfuckers are singing and all they have different registers and that guy in particular had like a particularly high register that would just like sound really cool yeah right before going into like the uh, hook or whatever was happening next and like there was like little flourishes that were happening that were like parts that was like okay yeah that's probably pre-recorded but then you're hearing other parts where it's like oh no but they sang that and they probably did that just cause I mean for god's sakes look at them they're fucking dancing all high energy and shit and you're just like holy fucking shit I was overwhelmed dude <laughs> I guess because I didn't watch the performance live, but from these two uh, performances I wanted to talk about, there was a sort of throwback vibe, which I wasn't aware of might have been a theme. Uh, yeah. At the top of Lady Gaga's performance, you hear a voiceover from, I want to say, the 1999 It looked like MTVs. it, the TV screen said 9999, so I was yeah. confused, I was like... Wait, it's supposed to be the future? The past? I do remember them having that for some reason. That was the logo. Oh. It was just four nines. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> 1999, you're so fucking cheesy. <laughs> they were like, uh, up next is Britney Spears and NSYNC and then Diana Ross. And then they, they go, uh, and a special performance by Lady Gaga live from Chroma. And the TV cuts out. Right. It's like, ooh, ooh what's going on here? Yeah, yeah. And then it fucking cuts to the rooftop or wherever they were supposed to be. Cyberpunk as fuck vibes with this one. Lady Gaga's like the little mask with the light up sound waves on it. I love that shit so much. Um, starting out with uh, 911 was a questionable choice. Here's my thing. Like, these were all the songs that I didn't like the most off of this album. I remember you saying that you liked these songs, but these are the songs oh, yeah. that, like I didn't like and like even so, I was like, I didn't care. I'm, I'm fucking snapping along with it. Like, you know what I mean? It was just like, I didn't even have a feeling of like, oh, but I wanted to hear because like, as, as I was hearing, it was like, these sounded like elevated in a way. Like, they sounded like, I can swear these sounded better than the album. You know what I mean? Like, they might have been curated for a particular purpose because 911 kind of has a vibe or a uh, kind of an overall story of uh, potential self harm being your own worst enemy then going into rain on me it has a you know i'd rather be dry but at least i'm alive and then stupid love she kind of broke it down and she was like love yourself be kind to yourself so the whole thing kind of had a self-love be you know be you love who you are type overall kind of aesthetic for sure so maybe that's why we didn't get replay or babylon Oh or God. any Replay other other Babylon would have been that would have shut down the goddamn house. <laughs> so you go from nine one one to awesome costume change number two Whoa. into rain on me so fast too. I, I I almost didn't catch it. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what I have no happened? fucking idea how they're doing this. I thought there was gonna be a longer cut, and then it just zooms right back down to it. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you're ready right now? What's up, MTV? There's one part where, like, she looks at Ariana Grande, and she looks like she's, like, going in real quick to, like, advise her on something, like, hey, are you okay? Like, because, and what had just happened was, like, Ariana had just sung this, like, incredible note, like, absolutely flawless, and so it looked like Lady Gaga was like, hey, we didn't plan that, are you, are you alright? <laughs> like, you know, it was just, like, such a strange thing. I remember the meme was her leaning in saying, don't you ever hit a whistle note on one of my songs ever again, <laughs> this is my fucking performance. <laughs> but either way no! Don't be like that Don't be that way Gaga <laughs> I wish that Ari brought that Energy on the record mm -hmm. There's no whistle note On the yeah, fucking album I version that. I needed that so bad She was so like Drowned out on the record She, You, you might as well not even had her on the fucking record because she's not really doing anything all that special but man she fucking brought it at the performance absolutely i wanted to bow so hard that my knees touched my forehead i was like queens queens of pop yes <laughs> and that would have been fine if you would have ended right there i would have been fine with that but then we got stupid love anyway and she's playing the goddamn brain piano Ooh, the brain view <laughs> Tickling those cerebral ivories. <laughs> that would have been, without a doubt, my favorite performance, but yo. Oh. Yo. 
Fucking Doja Cat, though. Okay, I hadn't. Uh, <laughs> oh, I had oh, that one down. I yo. had that one down. <laughs> Look, it's undeniable that that fucking performance. Mm, mm, and mm. and you could hear more of her like her distinct voice yeah. in it. And I felt like they were really playing that up and I was like, I want to hear this. It's so creamy. It's so, you know what I'm saying? Like It was a ooh, really dope so remix too. And just the goddamn yeah, costumes. Yeah, one part where something switched up where it sounded like a little like early 90s bumping remix to it. And I was like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> it's like, you just made me like this song more. God damn it, release these fucking versions on goddamn Spotify. <laughs> I don't know in what order these performances aired, but the way the YouTube edit ran, it had the Lady Gaga performance, and then I was sitting there like, how are you going to top that? And then it was followed up immediately by the Doja Cat performance, and I was like, (laughs) okay, all right, that's not bad, not bad. She had the mermaid light up fucking thing she was wearing, oh my god, Uh, on the set, and it like turned into the fucking space thing at the end. Damn, they were oh doing so God. much shit with that fucking green screen, man. I really hope that stays. I'm, I, I can't say it enough. They did so much creative shit that it's one of those. What is it? Fucking necessity breeds invention or creativity. Absolutely, like, yeah, yeah. Man, what the fuck are we gonna do? We have to make this hype. Well, how about during Lady Gaga's performance? It looks like there's a bunch of surrounding like buildings, and you see people like on their webcams as they're watching it, and they're like looking out the windows of the buildings like <laughs> why not before i didn't enjoy the 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 rapping she was doing but with this it worked with ariana just singing in the fucking clouds and hearing lady gaga like with the breath control that she has because again she's such a fucking performer like you see her like and you know you see her bellies out and it's like you can see her like moving to like get these fucking notes and make sure that shit is controlled while she's still moving around and she still looks like she has she's having fun she doesn't look like this is like you know what i'm saying belabor like you can hear the energy that's in her voice but at the same time she's moving around she's like yeah right on me and i'm like as i'm looking i'm like you you're fitting the rapper role right now like because when it got to the rain on i was like oh fuck like it just hit me in a way that it hadn't hit me before moving on real quick to talk about some of these um the awards you know because it's a fucking award show right oh right yeah yeah, yeah, all right i guess so look (laughs) song of the year okay song of the year goes to rain on me by lady gaga and ariana grande we just talked about how much i love that song that is not (laughs) not 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 (laughs) song of the year people like a tweet that fucking did gangbuster numbers was just saying i never heard the song in my life yeah yeah because it's not getting radio play like anywhere (laughs) it won against say so uh, everything I wanted by uh Billie Eilish, fucking Savage, Post Malone Circles, and Roddy Rich the Box, Rain on Me wins, really. And I even gotta say, Artist of the Year, The Weekend, Post Malone, Megan Thee Stallion, The Baby, Justin Bieber. How is Lady Gaga winning that over Megan Thee Stallion? No. This is Michael Jackson in like 1991 where it's like, all right, we got, this might not be your best album, but okay, you put in the work. So here are the rewards because she should have been winning Grammy after Grammy in all that shit for Joanne. That's just how I personally feel. Uh, but so like, not only like, yeah, did they miss? Well, no, I think she got uh, her, her due like when she first came out, but like, and then this one's like, all right, well, you know, it's 2020 and there's nothing to do. Of course, the biggest pop star of the past decade comes out. And, well, of course, we got to give it to her now. Yeah, because everyone's paying attention. Yeah, of course, we give re- respect to our artists. See, we're giving it to her. Even though, like, I, but was this the year? I don't know. You know, like, first of all, Savage should have been the, the remix with Beyonce. Because that song is fucking untouchable. Um... But even if you're just going with songs that, like, everyone was fucking going to hear, yeah, Roddy Rich is the box. Like, for God's sake. If this doesn't tell you that rock is dead in 2020, these are the nominees. Oh, I would just look at Coldplay, <laughs> Blink-182, Evanescence, oh. Fall Out Boy, Green Day, and The Killers? Dude, 
Oh, you, you, Fall Out Boy featuring White Clef Jean, so it definitely feels like 2006. <laughs> is, there, is there any group in rock right now that formed less than like 15 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> Did they stop making rock bands? Or what? what the fuck is this? <laughs> Evanescence? I didn't even know they were still putting shit out. Oh, the name of the song, Dear Future Self, hands up. This really does sound like a song transported from the past. <laughs> Fucking, man, I don't even want to hear that because <laughs> Fall Out Boy hasn't put out anything decent in like three albums or something. I, I don't care to hear that. I was joking about uh, talking about, hey, I'll go to Blink-182 and they put out something. And it's like, Blink-182 actually was one of the nominees. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> just the fact... Like, because I, I was just thinking of that, I, I'm in love with, but I was like, oh, that was from a couple of years ago. But I'll bring up that joke in reference, like, no, they actually really did something. So I could just be listening to what Blink-182 did. Like, why are you trying to act like you're replacing them with their, uh, like, as far as rock is apparently concerned, still here. <laughs> Song of the Summer went to Blackpink, and that kind of got me, too. Because, let's just run down the fucking nominees, okay? Uh, Blinding Lights, Cardigan, that feels like a late entry. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that album's, like, not even been out a month, and that's already in there somehow. Uh, Watermelon Sugar, again, another late entry, but okay. Oh, oh, yeah, I've been hearing you that You got one, uh, Pop though. Smoke uh, featuring uh, 50 Cent, Roddy Rich, The Woo. You got uh, Megan Thee Stallion and Beyonce with Savage. Dua Lipa, Break My Heart. Jack Harlow was poppin'. Doja Cat, Say So. DJ Khaled and Drake, Popstar. DaBaby and Roddy Rich, Rockstar. Miley Cyrus, Midnight Sky, again, very new. WAP, very new. Yeah, whoa. And you gave it to Blackpink for a song I'm honestly not familiar with. We gotta move on to some album reviews, because we've already gone for a while. Oh, that's we right. We have got to talk about... I'm just gonna go ahead... And say we're gonna talk about, uh, fucking Puna Haley. Uh, uh, oh, uh, are you are you conferring with me what the name is? <laughs> How to say the name right? Is that what you're doing right now? <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. That's me. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did he say his name at any point? This fucking album didn't have lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> look, okay, yeah, look, at the top, I gotta say again, and look, folks, I'm not gonna make chastising the listeners and the people requesting the albums a recurring bit, but, oh, man, we gotta have some lyrics to go off, man. And, and, and it's always the rap albums where they're saying it's hour-long fucking albums with 18 tracks where they have four verses each. <laughs> Uh, hope you're not holding your breath for me, like, quoting a whole bunch of shit, because I'm not going to be doing that. <laughs> and, like, half of it's in another language, so I'm not sure what the <laughs> what's happening. <laughs> so it's uh, Puna Haley from Beneath Mount Ka'ala, requested by Andrew Outwater. I just have these written down because I don't have a lot of notes about the individual songs, because A, no lyrics. B, we'll get to it. Here are my thoughts in a nutshell. Underwhelming Beats. Repetitive yep. choruses, mm -hmm. unimpressive features, awkward flows, bars randomly not rhyming, a lot <laughs> yes. of repeated subjects making songs run together, yes. cool ideas presented on the album, but overall boring and long-winded. Absolutely, <laughs> and and it's so annoying because as soon as I saw you know the name of the album, I'm like oh a Hawaiian rapper, oh shit, we're about to get some fucking you know a, a new little piece of culture added to this you know little podcast, you know because I think before we done um we had a couple Native American albums if that's what yes you're Frank talk Wong about. I believe it was yes oh well, yeah an mm -hmm. incredible album I'll still go back and listen to that one. I like the little tastes of other cultures, absolutely. Especially when they're talking about shit I'm not familiar with, like stuff y'all are dealing with that we might not be aware of. Because someone could definitely... F God, that sounds bad. Someone could definitely find this enjoyable. It's just that almost every aspect of it fell, fell short for me. Beats fell short, lyrics fell short, flow fell short. Some tracks stood out, but I couldn't tell you what they were really about because I didn't write anything down for them. But just about every track was middle of the road for me. 
Yeah, like, the, the, he would bring up stuff every now and then that would be like, holy shit, that's really important. And he would, like, repeat lyrics, but it would be a thing where it's just like, well, you know, we don't really hear about what goes on, you know, and how these people are being exploited as much. So it feels that much more important when he does, like, repeat certain things. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's one lyric in the first song where he says, like, you know, they locked up Michael Pena for speaking Hawaiian. They tried to kill our culture by killing our language. And, like, he repeats that lyric. And I was like, holy shit, wait, what? Like, they're just locking up motherfuckers just for like you know for daring to just like exhibit their culture and yeah i do remember learning about stuff like that like with native americans specifically you know making them yeah basically just forms of genocide where it's like you know Mm -hmm. unlearn your savage ways so that you can be the right way and then we'll assimilate assimilate. culture yeah yeah that type of shit and it's just like oh man it's so fucking cold seeing this happen and like hawaii like this wasn't long ago this is like the fucking 50s like you know you ever really think about that like like sometimes you look into that and you're like oh yeah hey hawaii is like (laughs) was last state so close wow it's interesting 1955 and then she's like wait wasn't there some funky shit going on wait what happened to uh you know uh, uh queen lila Kawala? what's going on there why why did we allow that to happen wait a minute <laughs> you know it's just so much funky shit and i really would have appreciated like i appreciated that he did do some of it um but i really wish he would have like had a full track where it's like boom let's strike you with with the facts and maybe have some other tracks where like it, it's more of that fun vibe because with this it just felt like it was littered throughout but didn't really hit until like one track where it was like a minute and a half and there was like a speech at the beginning at the end that happened that really like punched it up more because again like he's his rapping is just not good at really getting across the point but there were some visceral lines that were cool but like it was like the speeches of the other guy that was talking that was like whoa this is really making me you know notice what's happening and seeing how the situation is playing out then fucking we get to Mumbai you learn where it's like I'm riding with it you know even if it's like you know dirty grimy sort of uh, music I can feel it on the level of like hey but this is a Hawaiian rapper maybe he's not getting the most funding in, a wor- in the world you know I can still ride it with it on that level then I'm listening to the song and he's like strippers get no tips cause real love don't cause a thing and I'm like what what <laughs> There was a weird theme on this album of shitting on sex workers and also pick yourself up by your bootstraps, get a job. Like, But also the strippers love me because they respect me. I doubt that. I doubt that very much. Uh, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> it's weird that it comes up as much as it does. Yeah. And... Even if, like, all right, yeah, the songs where they're trying to talk some real shit might not be hitting the hardest. Then you got other songs that are trying to be, like, party songs. And, yeah, the one you just mentioned, uh, No Aku Birds. What a fucking mess. That's the worst cut on the album. That is hands down the worst one. I got love for the strippers with the cookie out. <laughs> like, what? What is this? And it's a fucking mess, dude. Do you remember the chorus where it was just sounded like things just being played over each yes. other? <laughs> like, I couldn't. My eyes were just like, whoa, 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 whoa. What the fuck is happening? Slow I'm down. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like something in a browser started playing and I had <laughs> exactly. to check real quick. Oh, I gotta turn that off. Oh, it's on the record. Oh, another track I'm particularly not a fan of. The over six minutes. Oh, man. All salty. Oh, God damn it. That rinky dinky ass fucking production. The f- sounded like a goddamn 1988 NWA B side level awkward type of production shit going on. Like, oh my God. And it's just repeating the same shit yes. over and over and over again. How it's all salty. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> there is the track uh, Jawaiian music saved yeah. my life. And what they're going for here is a sort of posse cut. And I guess. <laughs> and it's just a whole bunch of folks. And it's just one after the next of like, this is where I particularly had the uh, unimpressive features. Mm-hmm. There was this track and another one where just random people show up, yes. and it's like, yo, the main dude isn't all that great. Now you're trying to shove these other people in my face, and they're like, even less stellar? Yes. 
<laughs> they're not even reaching the bar he said yeah. come on and th- there's one girl that starts rapping and yeah. like you know after all the sort of like you know misogynistic shit that, that you hear earlier I think uh, that one lyric where I said like strippers get no tips I thought he was at first saying the strippers got no tits but that's okay like I thought he was going like oh you know <laughs> but that's okay <laughs> right you know <laughs> no no but no, 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 no. It's even worse. but then like you hear like this female rapper coming I'm like oh okay well this at least like you know hey giving her some time but man I was not interested in anything no. she was saying and then I she hate it when back, that happens and it was like oh uh I guess that's nice that you're back like <laughs> You need the awkward, like, hello, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, you're I... done. Oh, I'm, I'm, I mean, no, 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 keep going. I, that's fine. <laughs> and it's so long, man. Oh, my These God. These long tracks. And she, like, not here for it. at some random points. It's like, uh, <laughs> and, like, when she does that, it, it, like, it just especially feels like, this verse isn't over yet, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just elongating the words and making it take longer. Oh, my God. The fucking Mumbai, you learn... And there's one part where he tries to rhyme honey with cover and it's just so oh, yeah it's like it's like you know me I'm all about my honey but when I go through I'm always staying undercover and I'm like uh like honey is the most you have to rhyme this with money type of word ever like it is the most there is a clear rhyme you need to go to unless you have something more clever and to just go like undercover is just like oh oh just the face palm i hope it's audible to hear that that was happening <laughs> i'm just like oh for fun's sake man it's honey money bottles and models you know <laughs> right reach the flow rider standard <laughs> <laughs> and then the, he says one lyric where he's like, I love eating candy. That's why I'm really fat. Oh my God. <laughs> no. What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> I'm like, what? I, am I supposed to think you're cool or that you're fucking Pooh Bear in the Hundred Acre Woods? <laughs> what is going I wish on? I would have wrote that down. Thank you so much for reminding me that. Cause that oh, couldn't let that no. one go by. <laughs> Fuck that. Fuck that. <laughs> And then on Punohu, so, you know, again, the first two tracks, I'm surprised I wrote it this early, because I'm trying to give this guy a pass. You know, I told you, I'm like, hey, man, you know, I understand Hawaii, Hawaiian artists, you know, you're not getting the main production. By track three, I was like, all right, this is a little too podunk. <laughs> like, this is, you gotta try, man. If I'm getting a vibe that, like, English isn't your first language type vibe, <laughs> right. I try to look past that. Right. They fucking come up on this show way more than I thought they ever would. Urban Dance Squad. <laughs> Kind of. God damn it. Where it's like, eh, you know, but at least that, I remember the beats being all right. Maybe? Yeah, they're obviously it's been a while since I things, listened to it. Yeah, they're all right. <laughs> but, like, the beats on here were so, like... Nothing. Oh, my God. It, there was one lyric. Yeah, I hit you with the heart squeeze. I'm trying to live to see my youngest go to college. <laughs> nope. Just, uh, as I was hearing it, like, I could just immediately visualize him going, Oh, yeah, that didn't... I couldn't even try to make that run. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going keep going maybe they won't notice it yeah like the next rapper comes in so anyway I'm like <laughs> <laughs> I, I, he mentions at one point going to chicken fights and but then that was the same song where it's like yeah like halfway through he's like he's saying some serious shit about like you know recruiters are all up in our schools you know that's how they keep the public fooled and I'm like oh shit yeah that's a fucking hard real shit that they need to hear there's a, a strong uh, theme in this album about how like yeah the military tries to get Hawaiians you know native Hawaiians to join the uh, the, uh, the army you know what I'm saying yeah. and you know at, at the end I think he says like you know he literally says like don't join the military don't join the military the war is in Hawaii don't join the military. I was like, holy shit. Like, that's some, you know what I'm saying? That's some standing up shit that I loved and I wish I could have seen more. That Instead stood of fucking out, yeah. The strippers with the cuckoo out. Like, ugh. Mm. There's these songs that are like named after people and stuff like that, but he doesn't do anything with it. It doesn't mean anything. It's just like a bragging point. Like, it just feels like, you know what it is? I, maybe there is a mainstream rapper out there who's a wire right now and like, he doesn't mention his heritage at all. Now, I would like to have this as opposed to that, right? Where it's like, hey, at least, you know, you're getting references and stuff like that. 
but I certainly do feel like there must be a Hawaiian artist out there who's a little more cohesive than this. <laughs> Fucking stay true. It had a very lo-fi grimy thing, but I actually kind of think it worked in that sort of like, you know, it's it, it sounds like it's recorded in a washroom. You know, the subterranean knock of that beat, like with the low-res recording, like it kind of had, it kind of made an aesthetic of it. You know what I mean? I appreciated it in that capacity. Like it was that thing where it's like, there's parts where it's like, there's little pockets of like, ooh, you're actually making that work. Like, I think actually Lao Lao's for the hood, the beat for that sounded okay. But I, yeah, the way it fucking started with the him doing the fake Valley Girl accent for no fucking reason. The, oh my God, what's going on? Like, what? 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 Why? The songs I gave the highest ratings to, and I wish I could elaborate, uh, would be Bentley. Yeah. Amp 13. Oh, that was a great track. And They Will Fall. Those three got my highest rating. Amp Site 13 is the most heartfelt track about mm. having family dysfunction but still wanting, you know, Hawaiian unity for his people. Like, I love that. Like, that was such a great moment where it's like, oh, I, I can see, you know, what, what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? And really appreciate it. Fucking Ballistic Missile Threat. That one, like, had the best beat that, like, at least sounded cool, but that just had the worst lyric on He's like, Rap Games Little Nicky. I'm like, yeah, that's oh. not cool. You, <laughs> that's not cool. <laughs> I'm the rap, that's Kanye levels of, like, <laughs> pop culture referencing. <laughs> Overall, I got a two. How about you? Uh, I got a two and a half. We got to move on. To a very familiar face, we gotta move on to Florence and the Machines with ceremonials requested by Harenya Hope. Always happy to always have them. welcome. There's always a spare room if you want to set your stuff down, kick your shoes off. We have the TV. Uh, you have cable hooked up. If you happen to be, you know, touring, you could leave all your shit at our houses. You know what I mean? Like, we don't even care, you know? Mikasa Sukasa Florence. Well, Straight up and down. And to a lesser extent, your band. I'm sorry. I don't know them by name. <laughs> Motherfuck, this album is so goddamn good. Holy um, shit, man. Can't even hide it. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> I really hate to just fucking... Right? I hate to blow the game. <laughs> So quick, so what soon. Is to say? <laughs> as soon as I hit play on this thing, I was just like, whenever we do these album reviews, it's always like, oh, there, that was the one great album they did, and here's the one where uh, you can see the promise, but uh, but nope. If Lawrence and the Machine put out a bad album, I haven't heard it yet. This ain't it. <laughs> oh my lord, man. <laughs> For me, there was a little dip in quality about midway through, but even then, it was just because the songs weren't grabbing me as much as the other ones breaking dawn and lover to lover were the ones i was like mm, i wasn't as hot on those but can i just for a second oh. talk about my fucking glistening fives mm. uh those would be uh shake it out oh my god <laughs> and fucking spectrum oh yes <laughs> that was another oh. level what I, yo yo i looked up on genius when they were saying like fucking oh yeah we were like when i made this song i felt like i think i'm just going into a new direction now and it's like that's what it sounded like like i guess this is the new awesome sound i'm making <laughs> the song just starts and then when the beat drops it only gets better from oh there. my god <laughs> little instrumental surprises keep popping in and chiming in and Oh my fucking god, I'm so glad there's a music video for it. It looked like there was a video for most of these fucking cuts, but this was the one I wanted to see. Because I was like, okay, the energy here, I need to fucking live this. I need to see it. But fucking shake it out. I remember that song actually getting radio play back in the day, because it's like a top 40 pop track, but mm -hmm. with Florence and the Machine writing, and the powerful yes. fucking vocals. It's a fucking anthem. Every album has one. This is this one's, I would, I would say. And it gets it out of the way really early on. Maybe too early. You maybe should have held off a little bit. Made me wait for it. But I appreciate it. Track two. That's fine. You need the dance party after... Oh, here's a song about my late grandmother. Oh my god. The, the and the heartbreaking sound. relationship that, and loss. Yeah, man. But it's so fucking intense, though. Like, I didn't even feel sad. It was just so, like, no. 
you don't yeah, you don't feel sad you just feel like you're moving through like it feels like you're moving through space and the quasars and the cosmos and all that stuff and it's like maybe it's scary but I just am so filled with wonder as to what's gonna happen next like I it's can't be too it's such a fucking scared. beautiful track you know yeah, yeah like the pre-chorus ends with just the it only if for a night and the way it just sounds is so satisfying because it's like the hook is so building up and then just drops on that oh it's so good Oh, let it fucking wash over you, man. Dude, <laughs> I swear to God. there. Uh, I think it was like a couple of tracks in where I was having that feeling of like, wow, I feel like we went from, you know, the rivers and we're smashing along the rocks and now we're going into, you know, the wider ocean. It's on the song Never Let Me Go because she literally brings up the ocean. And then like, but then going into Breaking Down, I was like, now I feel like I'm being dragged into the depths of the ocean. It's like, oh shit, it's still going. Like we're not, <laughs> the text painting continues. Like I just felt like I was going on a different different journey that was taking me even deeper and deeper into like her psyche and it started so crazily with only if for a night that it's just like like by the time i got to like tracks i'm just like yeah this is a fucking five get the get the fuck out of here take this five get the fuck out of my face (laughs) can i just say how much of a relief it was that I listened to this album immediately after the last one. <laughs> you needed it for your spirit. <laughs> I, I, I can't lie. There was a little bit of that last day before summer vacation vibe when I was getting <laughs> at the end of that last album of like, I mean, I know what's next. I know what I got. I, I, I know the dessert. I know the fucking treat. <laughs> the reward I'm going to get for listening to this. Your I got a fucking voice on the machine. <laughs> Yes. I'm glad you caught that. Um, but man, this is a goddamn roller coaster. So you got yeah. the emotional as fuck, if only for a night. Then you got the dance party and shake it out. Then a song that's inspired by fucking Virginia Woolf's drowning suicide. So it's oh, like, oh my god, oh no, <laughs> now we're fucking back in the back in the wallows. And then never let me go. I had another experience of, and I'm gonna ask you. Did you catch what sounded like the first couple notes of Old Time Rock and Roll by Bob Seger? Yes. And, man, you said earlier, I don't know if it's scarier or not. Can I just say, it's already fall, right? We can all agree on that. But with seven dolls, it Ooh. is spooky season, my dude. Oh, my God. It is is official spooky season <laughs> is upon us boys yes indeed who boy seven devils shit was fucking I love intense. that shit and i saw it like oh this was used for like promos for a uh, game of thrones i was like i know i fucking heard this before the the only songs i gave lesser not even negative reviews uh breaking down lover to lover and i hate to say leave my body the last track i thought they were the weaker cuts and oh, for an that album one. that was the for this strong mm. leave my body was a little underwhelming for me maybe especially after all this in heaven too <laughs> yeah the fucking yeah, hook man. was goddamn oh allow me to quote where she says uh but with all my education i can't seem to command it and the words are all escaping and coming back all damaged and i would put them back in poetry if i only knew how i can't seem to understand it and it's just like Again, just her poetry just fucking pulls you in. Uh, and I would give all this in heaven, too. I would give it all if only for a moment that I could just understand the meaning of the word you see because I've been scrawling it forever, but it never makes sense to me at all. And just, like, with with the music happening, it's just fucking... Like, again, like, she's saying, like, I'd give all of this up. I'd give up the, the promise of everlasting life just to fucking understand what the oh. fuck is going on. <laughs> <laughs> and and the music makes you like feel that emotion so intensely it is the perfect marriage of just like music and lyrics and just everything like oh my god man first of all it feels like it feels like a short review but honestly yeah. <laughs> honestly with the songs that came up a little short for me it came out as an average of a four but i'm still buying it like, I still gotta highly recommend this shit, because the songs that hit really, really hard, man, yeah, you don't really get more when it comes to just the intense and excuse the over overused, but, like, epicness of some of these tracks, where it's just... 
And, and it doesn't let up, too, because the thing about it is there are a lot of people, like, as I'm listening to this, I'm hearing all of the radio songs that were trying to rip this sound with the big yeah. epic shit with the millennial whoop and all that sort of shit. But it's like, nah. they still aren't matching this, though. There's a certain chemistry and energy to this that they are just paling in comparison to. That, like, even if you heard all those songs and still came to this album, you'd still be like, I don't need to hear any of those songs ever again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, holy shit, man. It really is something special, this album. Um, oh my god, I wanted to specifically point out No Light, No Light, uh, which I think was just, like, the best, 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 best track. Well, and then Seven Devils came in, and I was like, fuck, can't. <laughs> just the one, because, like, this whole album sounds like, you know, you're gui- being guided at least near or it to heaven and no light where you hear the lush instrumentation and the goddamn harp just floating all through the track like it doesn't sound in any way worse it just sounds like oh my god like I feel like I'm just like I'm hearing this beautiful music and then just a massage on top of it like <laughs> it is just yeah that is the most like if you want to hear anything definitely hear this and you're gonna want to hear the rest of this goddamn album how it went from noisy to ethereal in the intro. Yeah. This album is masterful at switching up from one amazing f- tone and feeling that you want for the whole track to another one. And you're like, well, I don't miss that last one. Right. Because this one's really good, too. Like, I'm fine here, too. It is such a satisfying listen. If it's happy to sad or sad to happy or whatever, wherever you find yourself, it's like, this is fine. You're that fucking meme. You're sitting in that room full of fire, but you hear the fucking Florence Welsh coming over the speaker. This is fine. At least we got to know it's a boy. I mean, maybe half of California needs to burn, but the point is, gender norms have been restored. Uh, no. <laughs> Look up that story if you want to know what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, we've already given you all our political content for this week. Uh, all I'm saying is that more damage has come from gender reveal parties than all the Black Lives Matter protests possibly combined. <laughs> oh, oh, and you got a point. It's not even political. It's just facts. It's just, you know, facts over your feelings, man. I remember seeing at one point with one of these tracks that was sounding particularly cavernous and haunting uh, they said like oh yeah she was particularly inspired by gospel music and stuff like that and I was like yeah oh that makes like this sounds like secular gospel it really does Mm -hmm. but in that way where it's like you know not just like tuning into a station it's just like glory hallelujah like the same (laughs) stuff it's like the stuff where you're like oh wait this this like you know this is like a black gospel choir from like DC and and the the, the synth players know some fucking putting some fucking chord changes in there hold on a second like they're giving them like a little solo and shit wait a minute these fucking uh, these singers are doing some complex harmonic tones like what the fuck is going on yeah. you know it's that type of shit you're like wait there's artistry going in here that even if you weren't religious like you can still respect this yeah oh like, you gotta appreciate it absolutely yeah. and you can feel the energy of what of what's trying to be conveyed you know I saw there was a more recent album I haven't heard I hope it's good I, I'm throwing the rap critic hat in the ring uh, Florence and the Machine can do no wrong I'm calling it right now <laughs> and hey and then they do a collab with fucking Lil Yachty and goddamn <laughs> Lil Xan on her latest album <laughs> if there's a better transition I don't know what is but if you want to hear our thoughts <laughs> on that more recent Florence and the Machine album head on over to our Kofi and re- do yourself a little album request we've obviously if we're doing two album reviews this podcast alone it's something to do fairly frequently so as of right now uh until further notice because the cues are a little long we want to play some catch up the album review requests are 60 and if there's an album that you made yourself it is 70 dollars uh we just want to bump that cue down a little bit, play some catch-up so it's not as daunting, and then we'll lower the price back. But we'll let you know when we decide that. And um, also, obviously, a huge thank you to anyone who checked us out this week. Big, big thanks. Uh, If this happens to be your first time listening, or if you just want to hear some episodes you might have missed, all of our old episodes are on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. One of those is bound to work for you. 
Uh, we got our link trees in the description, so you can follow us on Twitter, our individual Kofi's, Patreon, YouTube, Twitch, whatever we happen to have going on. You'll never miss a beat. You'll always know what we're up to. But until next time, I'm going off. Oh, yeah. I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic, and everybody do the government hokey pokey. You put restrictions on, you tell them don't come in, you take restrictions off, and the people die again. You do it a million times before you ever pay the rent. That's what it's all about. One more time.